have the pleasure of introducing Ben Moorhead. Ben is the Executive Director of the Trinidad Coastal Land Trust, so I get to work very closely with him on some amazing projects in a beautiful, one of the most beautiful places in the world. And uh, Ben is a Humboldt State alum, an undergrad and a master's degree in natural resources, and he's worked in land conservation field for almost 25 years in Humboldt County. And he's helped um, direct successful conservation projects with the sanctuary forest um, in the Matoll River headwaters, and was founding board member and projects director with the North Coast Regional Land Trust, working on ranch and conservation easements. Ben's been executive director of the Trinidad Land Trust for the past four years. His wife is a midwife at the birth center. He's very involved in raising and coaching his two sons and daughter through the Trinidad um, and Arcata High School. And uh, he's here today to share a little more about the Trinidad Coastal Land Trust. Please welcome Ben. Hey, good morning. Thank you very much for hosting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's special to me because my father is also a Rotarian for 25 years in the LA area, the Manhattan Beach Rotarian Club. So it's nice to be here and I know you guys do really great work and congratulations. Let's see, so I just wanted to give a brief slideshow of uh, the Trinidad Coastal Land Trust as an organization and uh, a lot of the, the land holdings and the projects and programs that we're working on. So I'll just jump right into it. I have 50 slides. I'll be quick. So <laughs> um, that works. Yeah. Okay. So sorry about the aspect. It's the the pictures aren't going to look as uh, as great as they will live and direct. So you'll have to come up to Trinidad to see it for yourself. But our organization has been around for 40 years. It's our we had our 40th anniversary uh, last fall, and um, you know with a mission to protect coastal access. And our focus area is from the Little River to Big Lagoon, the, the, the greater Trinidad coast. And right now, our, our land trust organization, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We um, hold 26 coastal properties um, in either fee title ownership or uh, with a conservation easement on private properties. That includes some of the most beautiful properties. Um, that, that you're probably familiar with. So uh, this map is on our website, but uh, if, if you can't read it, it just shows the um, coastline from Trinidad Head there all the way down to the Little River and the outlines in red are some of the uh, public access and trail properties that we share, that we share with the public. We also have um, conservation easements on private properties that don't allow for public access that aren't on this map. But um, I wanted to just go through some of these properties and just share the, uh, some of the special characteristics um, that include Muffinholtz Beach and Huda Point and such, and, and we'll start with the southern end of <coughs> Greenstone Beach. This is the Little River going into Moonstone Beach here, maybe Humboldt County's favorite family beach. The land trust is affiliated in that we hold a public access easement in, for the parking lot that allows the public to, to access this beach, and we work in cooperation with the Merriman family and Humboldt County Parks, and we do things like beach cleanups and ivy pools, and uh, the last few years we've helped with regrading and graveling the parking lot. Moonstone Beach. So I'll just go through a lot, several of these properties. That the next, the the next property that we that we own is the 20-acre Pilot Point Nature Reserve which is located uh, adjacent to Moonstone Beach. So if you walk to the end of Moonstone Beach, where the cliff and the waterfall is, the, the, that hillside up above, that forest, is this Pilot Point Nature Reserve. It doesn't have public access, but it does have a partnership with the HSU Geology Department that uh, acknowledges some special fossils and, uh, yeah, some, some special fossils that they found um, embedded in the hillside here as well as special plants, and it's a beautiful forest right on the coast with great views. And many of you have probably been to the Huda Point uh, Beach Park. Some folks think, think this is a county park or a state park, but it's actually owned and managed by the Trinidad Coastal Land Trust. It's our most managed property. It's the property with the anchor chain parking lot. And, um, and you know, it's the most popular surfing, one of the most popular surfing places in Humboldt. Known, you know, known as Camel Rock there, 
It doesn't really look like Camel Rock the way the <laughs> picture is uh, drawn out, but it is. Um, you know, we, uh, and, that, and that's Butner Rock there at low tide, just the most beautiful, magnificent beach for viewing. And we, we, we have several trails, or three primary trails on this property that we maintain every year. And we work with the BLM and other folks on special interpretive signage. Um, and it's you know used by a wide array of folks from painting, bird watching, surfing, and just enjoying the sunset. These are just some of the views from, from up at the top of Huda Point Lookout. And uh, you know we also own uh, the North Luffenholz Beach parcel, which is uh, connected to the main Luffenholz Beach access with the trail and such. Um, and we help manage the state-owned Luffenholz Beach Park. It was formerly a county park. It's actually not managed as either right now. The state nor the county are taking care of this place. So for the past couple of years, the land trust has done cleanups, painted over graffiti, um, ivy poles, trail repairs, tight, uh, low tide walks and such. Mm -hmm. And then this is um, you know, some of the views from the Luffenholz Point or Tapana Point looking north at the beach there the, at, during low tide. Just, just spectacular um, natural resources there. And this is an example of one, one of the ivy cleanups and scotch broom and the pompous grass that we work with HSU students and other clubs like the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts to get volunteer work done, taking care of the land there. And then Traveling up a little bit further north up um, scenic drive is, is Baker Beach. Uh, Baker Beach now has an official really nice trailhead sign that we recently put in, not included in the slideshow, but it's another 20 acre property that the land trust owns and manages. Um, we've been proven, you know, it's got a new trailhead sign and such, but the, the views are magnificent, the low tide, there's Trinidad Head uh, behind, you know, Baker Beach low tide. We managed the trail. We just, you know, just last weekend, I was out there with 20 HSU students and a few other uh, adult volunteers, and we repaired the trail steps at the bottom of Baker, which were almost vertical from the huge winter swells and the um, and the and the high tides that eats away the coast every winter. So it is our responsibility on the trails that we manage to go out there every spring and re-stabilize and slope the bottoms of the trails. So that was recently done for, for Baker Beach. <clears throat> this is you know, that, that, the point at the south end of Baker, Sotsin Point. Um, some of these places still have you know, Yurok names, and that's one of them. You know, I should know the meaning of some of these Yurok names, but I, I don't. Um, and, but that, you know, a special forest that we're working to keep the ivy out of. This is an example of one of the work days from a prior year, re-stabilizing the slopes. Uh, Carol's probably in this, vid in this uh, picture. Maybe you can see some, some folks down here. Uh, that's on one of the low tide walks that uh, Carol Van Numeer helps to coordinate and lead for the public and some of the programs that we have, like a, a naturalist training course that we call the Ambassadors Program as well as a, a citizen science seabird monitoring program, which is really a, a great model that some of the agencies are excited about. We have, I think, 20 plus volunteers now that follow protocol to gather data for seabird monitoring as a part of a bigger project. So moving on, we, we're affiliated with the City of Trinidad Trails um, through a matrix of private properties that uh, we have an easement on, or uh, this is an example of a property that, that we were donated. Um, down to, this is the Parker Creek Trail down to Old Home Beach, uh, formerly known as, as Indian Beach. And it's just a trail that we manage with the city of Arcata, sorry, the city of Trinidad. Um, really quick, we also own a Redwood Grove right outside the, right outside the uh, scenic drive outside the city of Trinidad that we hope to um, someday connect through the city trail and have a Redwood Forest to the Beach Loop Trail in Trinidad. So that's a goal that I'm working towards, but it's a slow process through the politics and the neighboring landowners. Mm -hmm. Our land trust recently, uh, or we've been in our own office now for about four years. Uh, we did a capital campaign for $100,000 about six years ago, and now we have a beautiful gallery slash office next to the Trinidad Library in the new Saunders Park complex. 
and that's a, 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 co a cooperative effort with the, with the nonprofit museum society, the library, the, the, the county library on the city property here, and then our, um, our land trust gallery office. And we participate in the art nights and um, have gallery exhibit shows. And these are just pictures of, that, of this new park. If you haven't been there, please check it out during, you know, the, I think the last slide I've got in this, it's the first Friday of the month is the our Trinidad Art Nights, and it's a nice, several venues, nice, you know, uh, a couple hours of strolling around if you're interested. Our Land Trust also does, uh, you know, tabling at events and such, guided hikes like I mentioned. Um, this is an example of our 2018 hike schedule and our 2019, you'll see posted around town uh, coming soon. Uh, we're, we just started a business sponsorship program, so we're looking for additional business sponsors for our, our hike program, and you can find all this information on our website, which you'd be listed on our website and acknowledge, businesses are listed on our website and acknowledged on um, during events and such. This is one of the low tide walks um, that, we, that we offer. This year is exciting. We just, we're, we just purchased a beach wheelchair, and we're going to be offering you know, all access uh, beach walks in addition to the low tide and, and hikes that we do. The work, the, 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 the Boy Scouts, the, the California Conservation Corps doing the uh, working on our properties. You know, we advertise stewardship days. We do uh, the first Saturdays of the month for the past several uh, months. We've offered projects, like I mentioned, at Baker Beach, Lovenholtz Beach, Huda Point, Moonstone Beach. Um, and, other, and, we, and we work with the Pack Out Green team on a scenic drive cleanup. So in the last few years, we've really stepped up our efforts and our programs and our, and our identity. And just, you know, it's the first time that I've had a chance to present to you here, so I'm glad to, to share this. And in conclusion, you know, this is an example of the bottom of the steps at Huda Point. This is the steps that the surfers all go down to access Camel Rock, and it's in pretty bad condition. We didn't have the time to get to it last week, but our next... Workday is April 27, and we plan to, those, the, the, the bottom 15 feet of the steps are like walking on a tightrope. You're bouncing and above ground, and so we have to get in there and restabilize with logs and, and rocks. And it's a pretty, um, you know, uh, primitive uh, task, but it, it feels good and it gets the job done, moving sticks and rocks. <laughs> um, and so, in conclusion, a couple of the major programs and projects that we're currently working on that aren't, you know, a part of our um, existing pro uh, properties right now. Well, this is a big one. This is a, this is a key part of my five-year plan in working with the organization is to create a stewardship fund similar to universities or other organizations where we want to raise two million dollars to hold in a fund that would take care of our. 26 and growing properties for you know, in perpetuity for future generations where we could you know have a dedicated fund it's held at the Humboldt Area Foundation right now it's got a hundred thousand dollars in it at this moment as of a couple of years mainly from the Trinidad Trust Fund the landowners in town that really saw the benefit of something like this and basically gave us their fund to take, to take care of the land so I'm doing planned giving uh, workshops and notices in our newsletter and such and trying to get folks interested to donate in their will cash and real estate to fund this program. Um, you might have also heard we're working on the Strawberry Rock Trail. Uh, we have an agreement with Green Diamond uh, and I'm working with other key organizations and entities to try to negotiate the purchase of a small trail corridor to Strawberry Rock that would include a redwood grove. This is the view from the top of Strawberry Rock, and this is one of the redwood groves that... Um, so I'm working with the Save the Redwoods League and uh, some of the Native American representatives and the Coastal Conservancy and the land are just trying to make this happen. It, it, it's harder than it should be, so no, um, no uh, end in sight yet. Uh, you might have also heard of another really cool project, the Little River California Coastal Trail. This is, um, you know, this map probably shows it better, but that's the Little River Estuary there. Uh, at the top of this map is the end of Scenic Drive, and that greens, green polygon is uh, the parcel that the Land Trust now owns. So we purchased from Green Diamond in 2014, this is 15 acres, it's adjacent to state parks to the south, 
and a feasibility study has been done, and we're, now we're trying to raise money with Caltrans as the lead agency to build the missing link in the California Coastal Trail that would connect Patrick's Point State Park all the way to the Humboldt Bay Trail off highway as a future goal. So people are really jazzed about this, but still, um, it, I can't even believe it costs millions of dollars for the permits and the planning and the engineering and the construction and we're still working with the county and Caltrans and the granting agencies to get this done. So this was going to be on my five year plan, to, you know, I, I think I'm in year three now, it's probably, this is probably going to be several more years before it's completed. But the ownerships are protect, are, you know, are ready to go and it will happen and hopefully sooner than later. Um, our uh, supervisor, Steve Madrone, is a big advocate for this trail. He was a part of the feasibility study years ago, so he's helping me to just politically push it forward. Would it require another bridge? We would have to build a parallel pedestrian bicycle bridge. That's where the cost comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Because the existing bridge, the Highway 101, isn't legally wide enough and the specs don't work for what we're looking for, for a, for a pedestrian trail. Yeah. So it's been uh, vetted. This, this is the end of Scenic Drive, uh, where the future trailhead of the Little River California Coastal Trail will begin. And this is like, you know, on our property. And, mm -hmm. and this, would, this would be, you know, the view that you would get uh, paralleling the highway on your bike or walking. Uh, this is the Highway 101 bridge, and it would, um, it would you know, end up at uh, the Hammond Trail at Clam Beach. I think this is my last slide. Just wanted to share um, all of this information with additional maps and how you can join and volunteers on our website. We post Facebook often for events that we list. We have events all the time. So please uh, you know, join us as a member or just sign up to learn more. And like I mentioned, the Trinidad Art Nights, we have our gallery next to the library on the first Fridays, May through September. So, um, so that's it. Thanks for your patience and listening and listening to me just, I'm not looking for a good picture to just end up. How about that? Um, <laughs> There's a lot going on. I talk fast. There's more to share. But in the few minutes, is there any questions? You mentioned Scenic Drive. Of course, that's the artery that services that entire piece of the coast. Every time I drive that thing, which is only periodically, I'm glad I have an all-wheel drive view. Is there, is there any, is, is, is the future of that just a continuous Band-Aid approach? Probably, Are they ever yeah. gonna, anybody ever gonna, I mean, it, it, it sure appears that at some point something could drop out and that thing could be, that already could be cut off even. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that's a threat. So it's really tenuous. It's a county road, and I've met with the county, of, you know, Tom Matson a few times, and, uh, you know, just in, the past, in this past fall, I did a driving tour with them pointing out some of the issues and such. They want to take the Band-Aid approach. That's, the, that's the, what the county wants to do, and with it even a threat of, like, uh, giving up on it if something major were to happen. So we, we, would, we would not support that and advocate against that, as with many of the landowners there. But there are some other projects going on being proposed, you know, like a frontage road and such to address the geology and instability there. But it's, there's, there's, land, there's many landslides that the county is always patching up, and, um, and it's a worry, yes. Talking about uh, membership, I was just wondering what the structure of the whole yeah. was. Yep, yep. So we're a nonprofit, you know, and like I mentioned, it was founded in 1978. So our founders originally set this organization up as a as a membership organization, where um, similar to you know, yeah, we accept donations, but you become a member and you have voting rights to vote on board members and other critical issues that um, that you know. And our changes to bylaws or articles of incorporation and such, but but in 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 practicality, it's it's just a, it, it plays out just like a regular um, donation membership to an environmental nonprofit. Yeah. But, but you get our newsletter as a member. You get you get special invites. Uh, you, you now get discounts on our T-shirts and hats and new mugs. Um, <laughs> come to the art night and you can see what we have to offer. Give any funding to like adjoining areas 
Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of folks think that the county park helps us or not. What we own and manage is a county. The county doesn't help us with much. Um, they, they're full, they're under budgeted as well. So we depend on donations and small grants. Um, we recently got, or we, we, we're in the third year of a, Cal, a state coastal conservancy grant to fund our environmental education program that's allowed Carol to come on. So that, just having a little bit of state money helps us take care of other things. Um, the county helps us out in other ways. When we do big trash pickups, they'll help us with our truck and take it to the dump. Um, but we're doing most of the work. There are other trusts and companies in this area. Yeah. Uh, how do you relate to that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the land trusts are uh, are an international and you know uh, 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 what do you say field or industry if you're, sector. Um, Land trusts in the United States are huge. There's a national organization that we belong to. And then in California, California might have the most nonprofit land trusts of any state. And Humboldt County has five or six as well. So uh, we, um, we operate you know, on our own and in our focus areas, but there is an umbrella effort to coordinate. And actually, Carol is a part of the umbrella. It's one of the many hats she wears. The, the North. Um, Northern Region Council, Northern Region Council where, where about a dozen different land trusts from Sonoma County to Siskiyou, uh, you know, come together as a regional entity to, to plan and talk about and give each other updates and tips. Is yours especially then the coast, the coastline? Ours is the Trinidad Coast from Little River to Big Lagoon. Jacoby Creek is just Jacoby Creek. Sanctuary Forest is the Matola River Headwaters. The North Coast Regional Land Trust was developed to um, fill in the, uh, the in-between spaces, primarily the, the working private properties. So it, it, we have our niches. Do you guys uh, work at all with the marine sanctuaries? Um, not exactly. The marine protected areas, those, um, Trinidad was excluded from that because for reasons such as the Trinidad Rancheria and the Yurok tribe and other Native American entities, they, they lobbied against a no fishing zone. Um, in the Trinidad area and uh, are working with the agencies to just best manage that in, in, while including fishing. So it was a neat opportunity that I think is working. Um, we work with the California Coastal National Monument. I, I didn't even bring that up, but um, you know, in 2019, Ob President Obama made one of his last executive orders, which was including Trinidad, a portion of Trinidad Head as the newest onshore unit of the California Coastal National Monument. All the offshore rocks are managed by the BLM as a part of the California Coastal National Monument. From San Diego to the Oregon border, all the rocks you see offshore are part of this national monument. So we work with the BLM in helping to advertise, educate, and do some on-land restoration work around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Thank Perfect. You. Yeah, and that covers it. I think we got oh, and, and I have I brought some newsletters. So we we put out an annual newsletter, and uh, this says twenty. It says twenty eighteen, but it's 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 our current newsletter. The new one should be coming for members. Members will get mailed a new one probably in the next month or two. But it, it covers all of our programs and has a, a donation envelope. If you're interested, I'll I'll leave it right here. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Matt. <laughs> Foundation oh, nice. for speaking. So, oh, thank you very much. Great, thank you guys. Thank you.